Hello everyone, welcome to the studio again. So this bowl is a spectrum glaze. This is actually refired. This is from the last kiln opening. And when I pull them out, like the outside of the berry bowl is fine. There are no pinholes or anything. But the inside has those tiny like glaze pinholes, so I refired it. And everything looks perfect now. So the the snow was put inside and outside, that is three coats. And then from the snow to the rim, that is three coats of Samria, and I cover the singer Samria with soft white. Okay, for this one. Another berry bowl, which I like just the simple beauty of it. It's so easy. It's a very simple combination, but I like the, the subtle hint of purple mixed with the honey flux. So it is just a combination of three coats of honey flux, both inside and outside. And then the top half of the bowl, I did th two coats of lavender mist from Mako. So it's a combination of Mako and Amaco. And this is the plate that goes underneath. No dripping. Have a failed experiment in here. This is glaze with Amaco Celadons. So three coats of, I think, Tangelo, and then three coats of Whipping Plum. So I'm wondering, that's a plate but it goes underneath. So I think I'm going to reglaze this with something. Maybe I'm going to cover the half part with soft white. I mean, it's fine, but I just don't like the color. No pinholes or anything. I just don't like the outcome. Anyway, it's fun to experiment sometimes. Finally fired this one. This is the the bowl that where my cat usually goes into while it's still a bone dry clay. He used to go here and sleep. So finally fired it and look at the outcome. So for the bottom, the brown, and the rim, both inside and outside of the bowl, are three coats of ancient copper. In the space between the coats of ancient copper, I did three coats of honey flux. And then from the ancient copper and then the honey flux, I did three coats of blue rutil. And then below the blue rutil, the bright bluish that you see there is three coats of purple crystal. And all the coats are slightly overlapping each other. Same thing with the inside. So after or just below the ancient copper, I did three coats of Blue rutil and below the blue rutil is three coats of purple crystal, while the base is three coats of honey flux. I think that's all my bowls. That is a request from a customer. 
like she bought one and now wanted another with the same glaze combinations. So the bottom is two coats of satin patina from Mako. From the satin patina up to the top is three coats of obsidian and then three coats of smoky merlot, three coats of seaweed and three coats of the indigo float. So basically a northern light combination. I mean I'm not a big fan of it but well that's what the customer wants. So I made that and I also have a smaller base. And I have a test piece in here. I know how clear this is gonna be. It's a tiny, tiny vase that I just did four coats of the Supernova, the Cosmos Glaze from Amaco. I don't know if you can see that. I mean, I like it. I don't know. Probably all you can see is the glare, but I don't know if you can see the variation right there. Okay, so this is a test piece. Inside is not glazed because that's what they recommend, and I did four coats. So the first coat I covered up to the bottom. Second coat I went a little bit higher. Third coat up to the half, and the fourth coat is only up to here. That's how I did this. And it did not run up to the bottom of the piece. So maybe if I'm going to do this on a bigger vase, I'm going to put something on the, the bottom to catch the drip from the supernova. Maybe a snow or something matte or something stable glaze. Another experiment, it's like going back to the 70s, something retro. Well, this is slip casted. It's something that my husband wants to recreate because we still have like four pieces of this that his mom did before. So we're now trying to recreate the piece if, if we can even get close to how it was glazed. So these are stroke and coat, two coats of sunkist, and then just two coats of froggy. Is that the name of that? Just froggy? Yeah, the green part is two coats of just froggy. I did not put any clear coat on top of it. And the back is just another two coats of just froggy. So this glazing is just similar to this, but look at the difference. So on this one, I did three coats of sangria and it gave me pinholes after firing. So what I did is two thin coats of sangria on top and then covered it with one thin coat of soft white. But I did not get what I want. So I'm going to refire this and see what happens. Maybe another coat of Samria and soft white. We'll see. And then the bottom is just three coats of snow. Inside, three coats of honey fox. Another field. Same thing. The white is three coats of snow. Honey flax, everything is good except for the top part. So that is the Mako coral and then a coat of soft white. Again, I did not get the drippy effect that I like from Spectrum. So I am going to think of how I am going to reglaze this one. So when I glaze mugs, I usually do a batch of 10 pieces per glaze combinations. So for this batch, I screwed up. I put all the three coats of ancient copper and then from the ancient copper up 
to the top and the inside, I was supposed to be putting three coats of sapphire float. But instead of sapphire float, I actually put three coats of blue rutil. And I really don't like blue rutil. I'm in the inside, three coats of blue rutil, but on the outside of this mug, I coated it with something. So three coats of blue rutil, and then on top of that is one coat of soft white. So soft white, blue rutil, and ancient copper. I mean, it's not bad. Another one of the mistakes for the ancient copper and supposed to be sapphire float combination. So three coats of ancient copper from the bottom and up to one fourth. And then I did three coats of blue rutil, including the inside. And then I covered that with three coats of tourmaline. I covered the whole thing with lustrous jade. So that's the outcome. So I made two of those. Again, all the coppers are three coats. Blue rutil on the inside three times and ancient copper up to the rim that is again blue rutil. And then I covered the blue rutil with three coats of honey flux. It's just so similar to the, the one I coated with one coat of soft white. I like it though. So I guess my mistake turned out into something good. Experiments. They're very similar. This is the one covered with three coats of honey flux and this is the one covered with one coat of soft white from the spectrum. I think I'll go with the honey flux. Another ancient copper, three coats and three coats of blue rutil. So the blue rutil, I covered it with three coats of smoky merlot. I mean, it's a very simple combination, but I like their salt. So there's two of them. Okay, among all the mess of the ancient copper combo I did, I think this is my favorite. So same thing, blue rutil. And I only did a three coats of ancient jasper, just a tiny band over here. I did not cover the whole blue rutil with ancient jasper, just probably an inch wide three coats of ancient jasper. I like the handle. I might be making more of this. So among the five or six combinations I did with ancient copper and blue rutil, I think this is the one I'm going to repeat. My usual combination with the honey flux, ancient jasper, and then textured turquoise. So the base is three coats of honey flux inside and outside and then on top I did three coats of ancient jasper and below that is three coats of textured turquoise. So, ten mugs like this. And here's the northern light combination. Just the two coats of obsidian, three coats of smoky merlot, three coats of seaweed, three coats of indigo float. So the black part is three coats of uh, valor black under glaze from Amaco. So, ten of those. Again, another thing. Very simple combo. The black one is three coats of velour black under glaze and then 
just three coats of iron luster covered with three coats of oatmeal. And you get those drips sometimes, sometimes you don't. So here's the thing, if I want the drip like this, I intentionally put like thick oatmeal, like right, right on the edge where I want to have the drip. But sometimes I put too much that it's gonna drip up to the shelf. But this time I didn't do any of that, I just glaze it normal and some of it came out with this. I think there's like two or three of them with a the, with the drip, like those. Here's another test. I forgot that I have this at the very bottom of the shelf, or the bottom of the kiln. So the Velour Black Under Glaze, that's three coats. And what I did is the inside is Smoky Merlot. So the rim up to the Black Under Glaze, I did three, two coats of Obsidian. And the rim is three coats of Smoky Merlot. Same with the inside. And from the Smoky Merlot up to the Under Glaze, I did three coats of Albany Slip Brown. I kind of like the, the type of gray. It's like a combination of black, gray. Maybe next time what I'm going to do with this is bring this down, probably up to like down near the bottom and just do a little bit. Like one fourth of the mug is just going to be the underglaze. But I definitely want this to be at least covering more than half of the, the mug. I wonder if it's going to drip.